Right, got it. She's down. They haven't seen us. There's a lot of team coming in. In the bushes. In the bushes. All right, got him. He's burning. He's burning. Careful. He's yeah. He's dead. All right, you got him. You got him. Oh, that one's a short. I'm going to break the gun. I'm probably going to take one. Okay, I'll take shotgun. Uh, let's go spider nighttime. You bringing dynamite? I'm bringing the machete. All the players with just someone spooked the birds. <laughs> Coming from the flare, from the flare. I'm gonna try to take this guy out. Why? Fast, fast, fast. I, 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 I. And then I think like we should take people to see what happens over there. There's a second clue coming up. See if you can find it in darkness. Uh, found the clue in the next room. Behind the walls, behind me. Got the clue. Alright, Puerto Rico it is. There he is. Oh. No, they're all just now. They can see us now on the map, watch out. Yeah, I got the burning. All right, they are all over us. Get out of here. We'll play inside here. Burning springs coming out to you. Yep. Good, now. Shoot him, shoot him. <laughs> right around the corner, we got two around the corner. Dudes there. His partner's got to be around here somewhere. I got him. Nice shot. Stay behind, stay behind, stay close. Oh, God, there's two players behind me. Move, move, move. Get the in Battlefield 5, you have more ways than ever to turn the battlefield to your advantage. It all starts with your company, your personalized unit of soldiers, weapons, and vehicles. More than ever, playing as a squad is key to success in Battlefield 5, so make sure to collect all the tools and gear you need to win the battle. We are bringing more depth to our known classes with the introduction of combat roles. The recon can specialize in long-range shooting, spotting or stealth. The assaults become versatile in how they engage the enemy. The medics have more ways to keep their squad alive, and the support can now provide backup with new attrition and fortification systems. For the first time in Battlefield, each combat role has a unique loadout and unique abilities. And over time, you will get access to more combat roles. Define how your weapon feels and performs on the battlefield. As you play and progress, you'll unlock tactical choices that affect how your weapons and vehicles look and perform. Complete daily orders or take on special assignments to equip your company with new gear, weapons and vehicles. As your company progresses, you will earn new items to visually personalize your company. You can customize your soldiers from top to bottom. Weapons can be personalized too. Now you get to decide how they look and play. Your company's look is up to you. Highlight your gameplay achievements from your journey through World War II, or be completely creative by designing a unique look. With Tides of War, you'll embark through humanity's greatest conflict, giving more gear to grow your company. Whether it's how you choose to look or how you choose to play, in Battlefield 5, you'll never be the same. is to defend a red talon tech through waves of zombies that get increasingly harder. So we're seeing this now. This is brand new footage from Gamescom. There's a demo That's that right. folks are playing right now behind us. And what you can see is like, there's quite a bit different, especially your location. Yes, it's a new map. Uh, you don't use your own community, so you're not going to lose any precious survivors. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait. I yes. have to ask, since <laughs> my likeness appears in the game. You said a red talon soldier, not your own community? Not your own community. I know. Right. Maybe if you keep leveling up those fighting skills. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. But it, it's it's good because it's a completely different type of thing. So, yes. so how does Daybreak work? Daybreak works so you spawn in as a red talon soldier. So there is permadeath, but if you die, you'll respawn as a new soldier in about 13 seconds. And they don't look like you, so you don't have to worry about it. Great, yeah. great. Yeah, Super I can helpful. Those characters. Yes. You have the best gear and you are defending a fortified position. It's kind of like siege defense mode. Uh, protecting the technician who's working on an uplink to the Clio satellite system. 
So Cleo is something we introduced in year one survival edition. Mm -hmm. So she controls a, a drone and satellite network. She's helping you with the fight. She's calling in airstrikes and leaving drops for you in the field. Now you mentioned gear. Is it safe for me to assume that there are new weapons and equipment? Absolutely. All new weapons, great gear, including unlockables for your community. Uh, nine new ranged weapons, six new melee weapons, six new consumer. Today's episode, A New American Dream. What separates man from beast? No, it's not his ability to tap dance. It is his desire to build. After thermonuclear war, man's towering industrial marvels may no longer stretch to the heavens. It then falls on you and the ingenuity of your fellows to rebuild the America we hold dear. Get started with CAMPS, the construction and assembly mobile platform. It's the workbench of tomorrow. Once established, your camp will not only provide you with much needed shelter, but also the means to satisfy your hunger, quench your thirst, and even treat infection. The essential pillars of survival. Expand your camp by scavenging resources or mining raw materials the old-fashioned way. Then construct your home of the future. If your first home site is undesirable, use your handy camp to move it to a better location. With your home secure, you can now craft handmade ordnance at your leisure to give your altercations that personal touch. Or better yet, sell these homemade implements to your neighbors for profit. Remember, capitalism, it's the only thing keeping us from being communists. The world may have ended, but keeping up with the Joneses has not. Use those hard-earned profits to upgrade your dwelling. When your home looks important, you are important. Now you've learned how to forge the new American dream. You are completely prepared to rebuild the greatest nation in the world. As a hand-picked resident of Vault 76, it is your duty to... Moscow city center uh, where Artyom's journey began um, many many months before uh, this takes place in autumn okay and uh, so uh, you know the, the game takes place over the course of a year and you see all four seasons so this is actually uh, pretty far along in the game already at this point okay I'm, so, go ahead ready I, I, I was just I was just thinking because like I went, I had to go on the demo earlier yes. One of the things I absolutely loved about the game is that you have so many different methods of approaching different situations that you're going to come across. I think in the gameplay that we've got, it's a stealthy approach. Uh, can you kind of talk us through what we're going to be seeing right here? Uh, so you can play 
Metro Exodus many different ways. You can you can play, uh, you know, full you know guns blazing, or you can take a stealth approach. The game tends to encourage that because it does become very difficult when you when you go you know all out uh, because it is a survival game. Uh, ammunition is scarce, resources are scarce, um, but uh, we've added a lot of. Uh, uh, you know, elements to the AI and uh, uh, stealth functionality of the game to yeah. make it a lot more robust this time around. So we've worked a lot on uh, communication uh, for AI so that it's a lot easier to understand what they're doing right. uh, without it being overt, without you know, uh, bringing in HUD elements that are unnecessary, which is something that's kind of a staple of the series. We like to, to you know, really let you immerse yourself in the game and and and. and Feel the, the the realism of, of everything that we're trying to uh, to allow you to experience, yeah. and uh, so a lot of these things come together. We we we've tried to like really build on that uh, this time around to provide a lot more of a dynamic experience where you can. Uh, uh, Adapt the way that you approach a scenario, and the game adapts to how you're, uh, you know, approaching depending on what you're doing, what the AI sees you doing, and you're able to uh, to kind of change that on the fly. Now we yeah. see we've seen some factions here, um, but it's not just other factions you have to worry about. You've got some vicious animal encounters yeah. as well, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, we one of the things that we teased at the uh, at our announce, uh, you know, last year right. at E3. I remember uh, that was, was from this level, right? And and uh, we had the big the, the bear that comes out at yeah. the end, and, and uh, he's back. He's in this level. He's scared. And, yeah, <laughs> the hell out of me. And it's it's uh, he's he's one of the one of the creatures. He's uh, you know in this level that uh, you know the player is going to have to uh, encounter. Um, and uh, there's also I think uh, you know at, at some point here you'll you'll see some uh, yeah oh, there's some wolves. There's a wolf. <laughs> yeah, there's some uh, some mutated wolves that you'll have to to fight off. Um, and uh, oh. There's a there's a bunch of new humans that uh, you'll come across in this uh, uh, level, just like any of the other environments. We have yeah. so many new societies for you to encounter. That's one of the things. How are those human interactions going to go? Because um, there's going to be multiple factions. Are there going to be uh, factions that you can ally with? Well, some some factions are going to be just pure evil, as, as you would expect. You know, of course. You know, bandits are probably just you know nefarious no, 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 people nice that are people. you know out for no good. Yeah, right. um, but some might not be. Some might be neutral. Some will react depending on how you act upon them as well. Yeah. So the game kind of adapts to how you play because we really want you to feel like you are entering the shoes of RTL and the main character and uh, assuming that role and deciding what type of person he is. You, Sean? Yeah. Yeah. So, finally decided to come and join your old man under the hood, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. I know it's not your thing, but you gotta learn a trade. Art, athletics, engineering. I don't care. As long as you put your heart into it. I'm trying. I just... I don't know what direction to go. You're only 16 years old. You've got time to figure it out. Trust me, it took me a while, too. And... you happy with it? I mean, your job? Living here? Of course I am. We're doing great. Maybe one day when I retire, I'll go back to Mexico, to Puerto Lobos. But until then... Ugh, I've heard this one before. Hmm. I don't even know why I'm fixing you a sweet car for graduation. Look! I told you, it was an accident! You better leave us alone! Oh yeah, go hide in your dad's garage. Pussies. You think you own the block?
Dude, did you get that blood on him? Uh, it was... It was an accident. I swear. He's a fucking retard. See what happens when you don't listen? Dad told you to stay in the yard. I know, I know, Sean. I was just acting like a zombie and I forgot. I swear. I swear. Where? Take the little baby back to his crib. Come on, Daniel. We're done. Yeah, go back to daddy. Pussies. No wonder your mom bailed on you. Whoa! Sean, you hit him! Get inside, now! Sean! You're dead meat, bitch! You and your whole fucking family are going to jail! Losers! What's going on? Fuck me! Daniel, get over here! Sean! Did he get hurt? Okay! Okay, step away. Now. Calm down, uh, officer. Shut up. And step back. <laughs> On the ground. Now. Hey, wait. This guy was beating up my little brother. Now. Hands behind your head. Sean. This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> Oh, no. Sean, what's Down happening? Down the ground, sir. Dad, we didn't do Sean, anything. Sean, be quiet. I swear. Officer, Shut I up. I'm sorry, Dad. Daddy, be quiet. I want to go home. They're good kids, officer. Don't move. I'm sure they didn't do I anything. I said don't move. Nothing. We didn't Daniel, do anything. It's going to be all right. On the ground. You're up, Nico. You know I got you covered, asshole. Try not to get us killed on the way there. Perfect timing.
arcade game for years. Actually, the, the seed of that conversation is a Halo pinball machine, which we still haven't made. So the idea has always been knocking around in the back of our heads. Just what would it mean to take Halo out of sort of the console and PC world and bring it, I guess, out into the wild? I want to say I s approached Microsoft about um, working on a Halo arcade game probably six years ago. The idea has been around for forever, but I think without that, uh, that move from Raw Thrills, we would never have found what the right uh, vehicle for that was. I got called up to the front of the office and I was just like, I was just asked, would you like to make a Halo game? And I was like, hell yeah, I want to make a Halo game. Who does not want to make a Halo game? Number one thing that Roth Rolls and Play Mechanics pride ourselves on is that we are arcade game makers. We understand arcade games. Our company creates games from concept through software, hardware, mechanical, and then all the way to manufacture. An arcade game is a physical, big game that sits in a location. And to do that, it takes lots of people and lots of, of different types of work and effort to get us to that point. See, normally I'm doing software, which is mainly what I do. This is what the actual camera is going to look like. Um, and software starts first, right? So in software, we come up with the imagery of the game. This is our G7 engine. The ideas of the game, the tempo and the pace of the game. What are the sort of key elements that the game we play is going to be? Yeah, there's the impact. There's nothing we can do. You know, we put a lot of effort into capturing all the little details of Halo. So I am currently creating the effects for the Scarab in our engine. It's all recreated from scratch. And it takes us a lot of effort to, to, to capture, to create it, to, so that the players, specifically the fans, can appreciate you know, that we are really trying to give them a true Halo experience. Captain Keys. Good to see you, Master Chief. Set in the same time frame as Halo Combat Evolved. I'm initiating Cold Protocol Article 2. We're abandoning the auto. Captain Keys is placing the Pillar of Autumn in Combat Alert Alpha. And we follow Fireteam Raven. That ends up, they are on the Pillar of Autumn. And the fire team obviously made perfect sense. So we're really an offshoot team that's fighting a big battle just to support Master Chief. Permanent forces are moving in on the Pillar of Autumn wreckage. Let's help push them back, Raven. This is our development station. We design the game on this, we make the game on this, we test the game on this, we play the game on this. You know, our goal is to have four people enjoying the game, but also have a crowd of people behind it viewing it. Usually we get, I would say, 30, 40% into the game. When then the mechanical engineers come in. So in our world, we have to make things that hold up to abuse, to uh, liquid spills. There's all kinds of things that we have to deal with in the coin-op world. We have a responsibility to make these things work for average, large, small. Everybody needs to be able to, to control the gun, to control it comfortably, and to be able to obviously get in and out of the cabinet without problems. So all of that needs to get assembled in its final state at the manufacturing facility. And there they will get all the hardware necessary, the I.O. board, the monitors, the computer, the gun control. Our goal was to get this thing as big and bright as possible so that in any location, you can't miss it. love to go out to the locations and watch people playing the game. That's our payoff. It took me back to the days of Halo CE where you would have to go together to a room 
to play together. We really took literally the old land couch experience of Combat Evolved and put it into public space. What I want people to see is I want them to be shocked that somebody actually built this thing. And I want this game to be everything. Big, exciting, epic. against the humans. That's not going to happen. Chief! If he leads the Covenant fleet to Earth, they won't stand a chance. You have to stop them. Take an inspiration from from real world environments, yeah. real world places. Like, talk us through that process. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, the game is actually set in the world of Chernerus, and Chernerus was, was created quite a long time ago by Bohemia, and, and these large worlds are something that are very in almost DNA of Bohemia, interactive, and being part of our games for quite some time. And Chernerus is actually a snapshot of uh, Czech Republic uh, from around the place that Bohemia is actually based. Okay, cool. All right, so this is like, you're battling and surviving yeah, yeah. in We're neighborhoods actually, and areas and towns yeah, yeah. that you actually know. Yeah. It's basically, you can go out of our office and you're in there. It's it's so, so close. But not as many zombies, right? No, 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 no zombies there. <laughs> okay, good, that's a relief. Um, now, one of the things I love about Daisy is, uh, is of course, the hardcore survival and the action. But it's, it's the relationships between players in the game that, that really intrigues me, the kind of moral dilemmas that, that are thrown up. Is that one of the most important things for, for you guys at Bohemia? So, a lot of people think, like, we're definitely not a battle royale game, although some people might think so when they look at the game uh, the first time. But in general, like, the action is only part of the interaction that you're having in the game. And when you're meeting other players and using voice over IP to, to talk to them and, and actually create alliances, there is nothing strict about it. Like, you can do whatever you want. So the moral dilemmas that you have in the game itself when you're playing it um, and, and features that empower those interactions like cannibalism, for example, because wow. eating human meat is a thing in DayZ. And I remember a couple of stories from, from the... From None more vigilant, safeguarded, prepared. Was it vanity? Bad luck? Or something more sinister? One thing is beyond question. This is where we push back. This is our defining moment. If we fail, our nation falls. 
We are the free world's last line of defense. Now this is full on claustrophobic, manage your oxygen. That scares me because I remember the first time I wandered in the last Tomb Raider game. I wandered too far into a cave expecting to find a tomb and I found a bear instead. And I, <laughs> I already heard you mention everything yeah. wants to kill yes. you. Everything does and, and that's the same thing with underwater where you've got moray eels, you've got piranhas, you've got crevasses, you've got to squeeze through. Lara doesn't have an oxygen tank so again you don't know if what's waiting on the other side. It might just be your death. That's kind and of we terrifying. Pushing. Sorry, we were pushing the spelunking experience. We we kind of like experienced that with that on Rise of Tomb Raider. In this case, we push it a lot. And one of the places, the only place on Earth that is not fully discovered, it's all these underground caverns. And in this game, we wanted to push that even further. So having going underwater, yes. you know, not knowing if you're going to have enough air or not knowing what's going to happen next, but finding a tomb, you know, it's very rewarding. So that was super important for us. And you and talk about fan favorites. One of my favorite parts, me being the fan of the series that I am, <laughs> I loved getting towards what I thought was the end of the tomb and the floor would suddenly give out from me and we had yes. that sequence, that animation where I'm uncontrollably sliding to and what I hoped wasn't certain doom. We're absolutely delivering even bigger challenge tombs, so I think you're going to like that because before, the, the challenge tombs were great little, you know, smaller areas, but now the crypts are as big as what the challenge tombs used to be in Rise of the Tomb Raider, and now the challenge tombs are as big as the regular tombs. Also, what are we uh, starting to see here, because we're coming up to the end of the gameplay kit? Right, so right now, what you're seeing is another example of all the pieces that Lara has to interact with yeah. actually being dangerous as well. You saw that she cut her arm on one of the inactive traps. That's to let you know that those obsidian blades are still going to kill you. So, of course, there are traps in the tombs, but there are also just puzzle pieces that if you fail to interact with them correctly, will kill you. So this is, right now, we've never shown anything beyond this oh moment. God. So this is the first time that you're going to get to see how you have to interact with the different puzzle elements of the Warrior's Trial. And you can see that this is filled with spinning contraptions, blades, flames, everything trying to stop Lara from reaching the secret. You seriously weren't joking when you said everything's been like up to notch. But that spinning flame looks incredible. I love that if the camera cut back right now, they'd see Benny and I hunched over watching this gameplay reveal yeah. for the first time <laughs> with everybody else. Like, we're super excited for this. Well, we love, we love, and thank you, we, lo we love making it feel like Lara has to earn the secrets of the world. You know, if you think about shadow components uh, of the game, mm -hmm. we're doing a little bit about, about that, showing people more of what the world looks like in different seasons. Uh, but yeah, we've got big news uh, about uh, how the online works in the game, and specifically we're talking about some of our, uh, our truly competitive PvP modes in the game. Wicked. Well, let's talk about some of that. We've got some nice gameplay up here, nice, uh, nice cosy there. Um, good oh, it. it's lovely that car. Actually, I think that's actually one of the cars that you will you will get fairly on uh, early on in the game. And honestly, it's just a blast to drive. And and yeah, I think what we're looking at here right now is um, a pretty newly revamped uh, PvP multiplayer mode okay. um, called Team Adventure. So if you are familiar with uh, with previous Horizon games, as I know you are, absolutely. Um, online adventure has been a has been the way you go uh, and compete with others. Uh, in Horizon games online. Um, and the format has been broadly similar for the last couple of games in that it's all about the open world. It's all pretty seamless, you know, so you don't have to wait in lobbies. You're always driving, you're always in control of your car. And it takes you on a bit of a tour around the world and you'll do races or you'll do games or you'll do a mixture of both depending on what you've chosen. Um, that format is great. What we've done uh, this time is a couple of things. One, we have made it like genuinely skill-based, genuinely competitive, you know, so the person uh, who is first will be in first, you know. Skills doesn't augment that anymore. Clean racing doesn't augment that anymore. Okay. So it's a real test of skill um, in, in this kind of competition. And then the second one um, is reflected in the name. It's now called Team Adventure. That's what we're looking at here. Um, so everything about this mode is now team-based. Right. So the points are based on how your teammates are performing just absolutely. as much as about how you're performing as and well, I think, right? I think that's absolutely key and it's the it's the root of why we've made this this the decision and gone in this direction. Love the that. problem with, with online racing sometimes is that um, if somebody gets out in front, 
they're pretty certain they're going to win. You know, it's kind of a foregone conclusion. Um, and, and other people can, you know, become a little bit less engaged in the game. You know, maybe they quit out of the game. Nobody wants that. It's not good for anybody in the game. With team racing, you know, maybe you're not the fastest in the field, but even just battling for second last, you know, you could get the points which, you know, are pivotal for, you, for your team that actually you end up winning as a team. So everybody can make their contribution, kind of regardless of skill. Um, you know, everybody gets to make their contribution and help the team, uh, and now everything is team-based uh, within the, the game. You know, to, to play into that, I love the communication that you've now got, right? You've got these uh, little emotes and communication lines that you can send Absolutely. to your Absolutely, right? quick chat is, is new for the game. Um, it's brilliant in, uh, in the shared world, you know, you're just tooling around the world, it's great to, you know, to chat to other people. You get a whole different set of uh, quick chat um, messages that you can equip for a game like this, for a playground game. We're, we're watching what is uh, survivor mode right. Uh, right now. So you have a different set of messages that you I'm Pete Samuels, I'm the Managing Director of Supermassive Games and the Executive Producer for the Dark Pictures Anthology. You should have never gone down to that plane in the first place. It's bad luck. You think you can scavenge down there and it makes no difference, but every single thing you bring back has an essence. It's like a ghost you invite to the surface. People drown in these waters and you have to respect their resting place. Damn straight. Brad, you got a fun ghost story, right? Dark Pictures Anthology is a series of standalone horror games building on Supermassive's reputation for horror, where the choices that you make and the actions that you take define the stories that you get. First game, Man of Madame, will release in 2019. Our plan from there is to release two games a year. Each story is unique and has different characters, different environments, and is based on different subgenres of horror. Gamescom 2018 is an incredibly exciting time, an important milestone for Supermassive. Not only is it our 10-year anniversary as a studio, and we're announcing the Dark Pictures as a significant horror anthology, but we're also announcing a brand new partnership, an exciting partnership with Bandai Namco Entertainment, and it's the very first time that we're announcing that we're bringing our games to Xbox, and everybody in the studio is massively excited about that. 